today's economic data and bring in our panel to talk all about housing and the consumer. Rogers Healy is with us, owner and CEO of Rogers Healy Companies, Jeff Tucker, economist at Zillow. Thank you both for being with us. Jeff, we got in some of that new home data, that new sales, and that was really some good news, a jump of 14%. What did you think of that? Yeah, I thought that was a great indication that buyers are responding to some of the slightly cooling market conditions that we've seen since the end of the summer. Homes are not selling quite as fast as they were. You're less likely to run into a multiple offer situation. And sellers seem to have pulled back a bit from overlisting or overpricing their homes when they list. And that's already paying dividends by actually bringing in some of those buyers who were starting to kind of sit it out on the fence when they heard how just impossibly hot this market was. I think, you know, when you say overpricing, I really can't get over it. You know, we go to a beach area out in Long Island. We go skiing upstate New York. Those two areas that I've looked at homes for the last 20 years, Rogers Healy, you know what I'm talking about, too, when I'm saying people are just putting, they're just throwing the craziest numbers out there and seeing if somebody bites. That's got to stop at some point, right? Yeah, I mean, much like my approach to finding a prom date, you know, you just never know. If you ask enough people, eventually they'll say yes. And I, and I think in places like beach towns or whether it's even rural America, there's still relative logic to support going out there and trying to find the number that just makes them move. But, and again, I think that we've seen places like Dallas where we did have people lining out the door to try to go and get their name on a contract. If that happens enough places, it changes the numbers for the whole neighborhood. And I think that it's gonna be an interesting next year specifically where we see these trends that have been established kind of go and you know carry us on to the, to the next generation of real estate buyers. But it, it has slowed down a little bit. And that's also this, just this time of year. If school starts, summer's over, people get readjusted, ready for the holidays. But, you know, I, I do think we're in for some relative unknown in an exciting way for us real estate people next year. Oh, for sure. And I know when you say slow down and maybe for a day or two yeah. um, and then they're back and you'll have multiple bidders. And as we take a look at this, Jeff, I, I know we were talking about new home sales and that jumped 14 percent to 800,000. And um, these are the highest levels since March. And how about the price? The price is up nearly 19 percent year over year. The median price of 408,800. Um, you know, at what point are consumers who are feeling confident just get priced out? I'm glad you brought that up. I think affordability is the biggest challenge, the biggest headwind facing the housing market for the next few years. We have this huge wave of millennials entering their early to mid thirties who want to go out and fulfill the American dream of buying their own home. The only real kind of support they have there is mortgage rates, which have remained, you know, incredibly low by historic standards. Um, right. And one sort of ominous sign for buyers is that that last kind of force in their corner, uh, mortgage rates have started to rise this fall. Uh, we're already looking around three and a quarter percent. Uh, and people, you know, we may be saying goodbye to the days of, of sub 3% 30 year mortgage rates. I think affordability is really going to start to bite in different markets at different times. Uh, places that are very expensive relative to local incomes, especially on the West Coast and the Mountain West, places like Boise and Spokane. Those are places where sellers really may start to run out of people who can actually make the numbers pencil out. At the same time, a yeah. lot of metro areas in the heartland, the South and Southeast, uh, Midwest, there's a lot of buyers who, even with some higher mortgage rates, they'll find a way to make it work and they'll still opt to yeah. into home ownership rather than renting. Yeah, it's so exciting as we take a look at some of these new homes being built, right? Love that kind of video. You know, people building their dreams. And Rogers Healy, I know you watch this. We talked about mortgage rates. And for a brief time here, and this may be what actually helped this new home sales number jump, it was below. The 30-year fix moved below 3% in September. So that may have helped this number. Um, that being said, what do you think home builders are looking at and facing going forward? This is you know, people are still out there shopping. Confidence is up. I got the consumer confidence numbers showing improvement at 113.8, right? That turned around three months of negative. And how about the National Association of Home Builders? A good number there. Sentiment higher, up four points to 80. Rogers. 
Yeah, so my, my first thought is a lot of these things that we're seeing that are new construction, it's multifamily, which means rent rates are going to continue to increase. So unfortunately, you know, kind of to play off what Jeff was saying is the rule is going to continue to shift towards affordability. And when that happens, millennials who make up a large portion, almost half of our first time buyers in the country, all across the country, nowhere specific, they're going to have to change their specifics. And I think that people would rather go and drive five minutes further than live in cramped quarters. So yeah, people can't afford to move to Boise or Aspen or whatever the hot spot is. The people that are buying their place for a premium are going to take that chunk and move to places they never thought they could go to, you know, in, in the past. So I think we've got a really interesting you know, dynamic coming up, but these people that have had their their mindset on the bullseye, they're gonna be one or two layers away, knowing they're gonna be there for three to five years, build equity, hope that the next generation has enough money to go purchase the home when they're ready to go and expand their family. Yeah, uh, Jeff, I'll give you the last uh, t- 20 second quick final thought. Yeah, I, I thought the data coming out today was great. The rising consumer confidence, we have new highs in the number of people who expect to buy a home, to buy an appliance or go on vacation in the next six months. I think this is the reflection of consumers kind of digesting yeah. the price and inflation data and realizing they still need these things. They still need that home or that new car. And you know they don't like the prices, but they've got to go out there and find a way to make it work anyways. Yeah, Jeff Tudor Zillow, Rogers Healy, the Rogers Healy companies. Thank you both very, very much. They'll have to wait a while to get a dishwasher or some of those things. (laughs)